Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Wednesday, November 16th, 2022. Good morning, I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin today with NXT live last night on USA Network from the WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. In the opener, Braun Breaker successfully defended the NXT Championship against Von Wagner. The main event saw Mandy Rose retain her NXT women's title in a last woman standing match against Alba Fire. The finish came when Isla Dawn, formerly of NXT UK, made a surprise appearance to toss Fry off a ladder through the announce table. And this could be Isla Dawn! The show featured a special announcement from NXT Senior Vice President of Talent Development Creative Shawn Michaels regarding a new type of match for NXT's next premium live event. Five superstars will compete in this unique 25-minute match. They will battle each other and the clock. Two superstars will start the match. Every five minutes, a new superstar will enter until all five are in the ring. The goal of the match is to have the most falls when the clock hits 25 minutes. Falls can be won at any time, via pinfall, submission, or disqualification. When a superstar wins a fall, they will earn one point. However, when the superstar loses a fall, they must pay the penalty. They are forced out of the ring and into the penalty box for 90 seconds. Once the 90 seconds are up, that superstar can re-enter the match. The superstar who has scored the most falls when the clock hits 25 minutes will be named the Iron Survivor and become the number one contender for the NXT Championship. Michaels noted during his segment that the match concept will be used for both the men and the women at NXT Deadline, which takes place on December 10th, and that its participants will be decided in the next few weeks. In other NXT results, Apollo Crews beat J.D. McDonough, the Dyad defeated Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen, and Carmelo Hayes and NXT North American champion Wes Lee made their title match next week official with a contract signing presided over by Booker T. In ratings news, this week's episode of Monday Night Raw live from the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky drew an average of 1.648 million viewers to the USA Network, according to Showbuzz Daily. That figure is up 3.54% from last week. In the hourly breakdown, Hour 1 had an audience of 1.789 million, dropping to 1.684 million in Hour 2, and dropping even further to 1.470 million for the third and final hour. In the key 18 to 49 year old demographic, the show did a 0.44 rating, which equates to approximately 574,000 viewers, a slight improvement from last week's 0.43, according to WrestleNomics. The show ranked number six for the evening on cable TV in the key demo, which is even with last week's ranking. In Canada, Post Wrestling reported Raw on Rogers Sportsnet 360 finished sixth among sports programming in the country, averaging 176,100 English language viewers and 79,300 in the 25 to 54 year old demographic. In injury news, Randy Orton's wife Kim posted a picture to Instagram Monday night showing Orton recovering in a hospital bed. It's not known if whatever procedure he may have undergone is related to the back injury that has kept him out of the ring since last May, but PW Insider reported that Orton was seen in Birmingham, Alabama, the city where Andrews Sports Medicine and the American Sports Medicine Institute are located. Both are run by Dr. James Andrews, the surgeon long associated with WWE and who has worked on numerous injured WWE talents over the years. Orton himself has not publicly commented. The Wrestling News learned from Randy's father, Bob Orton Jr., in September that Randy was seriously considering surgery on his back to help extend his career for several more years. In independent news, UK independent promotion Progress Wrestling issued a statement yesterday in response to online criticism of the recent announcement of a Progress show to be held in the United Arab Emirates city of Dubai in December, stemming from the UAE's intolerance of LGBT orientation and lifestyles. Homosexuality is illegal in the UAE and punishable in some cases by death. Part of the statement reads, We do recognize that this may bring criticism, 
but we want to be judged on the results of our actions and not just by the views of those not as well informed. This is not mere lip service to a very serious issue, but a sincere attempt for us to bring a different perspective. Unquote. Progress Wrestling's Sons and Daughters of the Desert event is scheduled for Saturday, December 10th at Warehouse 4 in Dubai, presented in conjunction with Dubai-based promotion WrestleFest DXB. And in the main CMLL matches that took place last night at Arena Mexico, in a trios match, Euphoria, Hechicero, and Mephisto defeated Negro Casas, Stuka Jr., and Volador Jr., and Angel Dioro defeated El Hio del Viano III to make the second defense of his Mexican national lightweight title. Angel recently celebrated his one-year anniversary as champion, winning the belt from Felino on October 12, 2021. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The Wrestling News can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the Wrestling News across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The Wrestling News is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the Wrestling Newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.